Meat Boy is back and in spirit of the Super Bowl, we are making a carnivore meatza, a uh, pizza, and this can be carnivore keto, depending on how strict you are with your diet. Let's go over the ingredients. The two base ingredients for this crust, if you want to stay 100% carnivore, are meat and eggs. I'm using organic ground chicken breast, very lean. You could use turkey breast, it's a little more affordable. Whatever meat you use, you know, you could use pork, you could use beef, this will taste strongly of that meat. This pizza actually tastes like chicken parmesan. You know, if you used beef, it might taste like a cheeseburger, you use pork, I don't know what it's gonna taste like. So I'm using chicken because it's very mild, and we just need to blend one egg in it. If you only have access to supermarket eggs, I would go organic omega-3 eggs. These might even be better than the pasture-raised eggs, but of course, if you can go to a local farm and get this stuff, that is your best bet. If you want to mix cheese into the pizza crust, you can. You know, if you're allergic to dairy, you don't have to. I'm gonna use some cheaper Pecorino Romano. If you're on the bougie side, you could grate some fresh Parmigiano Reggiano. You know, whatever cheese you have, you can even put, you know, quite a bit of mozzarella cheese in this. You could use half mozzarella cheese, half organic chicken breast, and it will taste more like a pizza because it will be less chickeny. One thing I think is mandatory is oregano. Oregano is a very classic pizza flavor. I put a lot of this in the crust, and you could also throw a clove of garlic in here if you'd like. Depends on how strict you are with your diet, with your seasonings. And of course, we're gonna throw a little salt in here for the crust. For the toppings, I'm keeping it really simple today. Uh, this is organic strained tomatoes. This is my favorite brand that I've tried. Really delicious, nice and sweet, just put it on top. And we're gonna grate some you know, fresh Parmigiano Reggiano. And here I have some raw cheddar from a local farm. You could use a mozzarella, whatever you'd like. The reason I'm not too enthusiastic about using a higher quality cheese in the crust is because this is going to get baked in a very hot oven for a long period of time. Whereas this cheese that we're grating on top isn't going to be heated as much. So we preserve more of the integrity of the flavor of the nutrition. Equipment wise, you know, parchment paper is kind of mandatory here for the crust. Uh, the food processor helps a lot. You might not need it. And we have a rolling pin. Now you could mix this by hand, but a food processor makes it a whole lot quicker and easier. One pound of the ground chicken breast. This is actually like $8. Uh, I'd rather use more affordable grass fed ground beef to be honest. But again, the chicken's much more approachable for kids, for the average person. One of the organic omega-3 eggs. And we're gonna add half a cup of the Pecorino Romano. And I'm gonna add a tablespoon of dried oregano. Now we wanna blend this up to form an emulsion. It's gonna get really, really sticky. What that's gonna do is after we bake this, it's gonna have the consistency of a dough. It's gonna stay together. It's not going to crumble apart. You guys can see it's like all balled up together. That means it's sticking together and it's done. As you guys can see, the consistency of this, like glue. Very hard to work with, but that's exactly what we want. The parchment paper makes this really easy and simple. We just take our mixture, spread it out here. All that we do now is form it into a somewhat even rectangular shape. And if you had a really large piece of parchment paper, or perhaps you used less mixture, you can make this a really nice shape. And as with cooking for yourself, cooking for your family, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you're cooking for guests and you want this to be really nice, this is where the time investment matters. Getting this dough as perfect as possible on this parchment paper will reflect, you know, the outcoming aesthetic. Now we we'll take the other piece of parchment paper, and put it on top. I'm gonna press this down a little bit to start spreading it evenly. Now we're gonna take our rolling pin and very carefully and gently start rolling this out. If you press this too much, what's gonna happen is you're just gonna flatten it in certain spots and it's gonna be way too thin. So the goal here is just spread this as evenly and thinly as possible across the parchment paper. This looks pretty good to me. Now all we do is slide this onto a sheet tray. You don't really have to do this, but if you want a nice crispy bottom, you put the oven as hot as it goes. In my case, 550. We're gonna put this sheet tray upside down like this in the oven. And we're gonna leave it at 550 for like 
15, 20 minutes, get it as hot as possible. Par cook this and then slide it onto that to get it crispier on the bottom. So let's put this in the oven. Five, 10 minutes, we'll be able to take the parchment off. We'll take that out, we'll let it cool, and then we'll slide it onto the hotter bottom. All right, it's been a few minutes. Yeah, looks like we could take the parchment paper off. The chicken has definitely solidified. So now, I'm gonna close this. We'll let that get hot. And we'll see if we could like flip this over onto that. So this is the game plan. Take this really hot sheet tray, put it like this. You hear that sizzle? Flip this over, take this top off, take that off. Back in the oven, 550 uh, on the hot sheet tray. And if that doesn't give us a nice crispy bottom, nothing will. It's been about 10 minutes. I just want to check the temperature of the dough. It's about 160. We don't want it to really be much higher than that for chicken breast. Uh, so when you're cooking a chicken breast, you know, the rarest you can take it is like 145 degrees, then it'll go up to 150. So we don't really want to cook it too much longer, otherwise it'll get really, really dry. So I'll switch the oven to high broil, and we'll take this out. If we take a look underneath, eh, maybe a little browning, nothing too crazy though. Now you can keep this pretty much carnivore. Everything so far has been carnivore with the exception of the oregano. So if you don't want to add tomatoes, you know, you could slice up some sausage. Here I have some Iberico sausage, that would be delicious. Put some anchovies on here, clams, you know, cheese, cream. You can make all types of white sauces that are completely carnivore animal based. That being said, I don't think tomato sauce is gonna hurt someone, especially, you know, bio nature, organic strained tomatoes, really high quality stuff. And this is for my sister, not for myself. So what we're gonna do here is just put this on top, spread it out. And just like you can add garlic and all types of different seasonings to the dough, and you could drizzle some olive oil on here, you could grate some garlic on here as well. Get as creative as you want with the pizza, except don't make any of that like disgusting buffalo chicken pizza, I don't know. That's not pizza, I don't know what's up with you guys on that one. Some of you guys with the buffalo chicken stuff. And I'm going a little heavy on the tomato sauce because again, you know, it's heavily chicken flavored. So we want to add a lot of tomato sauce and cheese. Now I'm going to take the oregano and I really want to rub it between my fingers to extract the oils as I drizzle it on the sauce here. Really reinforce that classic pizza oregano flavor. And this is where the quality makes a huge difference. This is DOP Parmigiano Reggiano, arguably one of the best cheeses to come out of Italy. This is a very classic pizza topping. It's usually put on in small amounts before the mozzarella in, in good pizza places. And when you grate it fresh like this, you really get a lot of that flavor. And you could do like, you know, the big shreds like this. You go tinier on the side. It's up to you guys. You could even do like, like chunks and pieces like that. Get nice, crispy, salty bits. Make a mess, get cheese all over your counter. And yes, you do have to grate the cheese yourself. That's what makes it really, really good, really, really tasty. And all raw dairy, you know, has plenty of fat, soluble vitamins, minerals, elements. The only thing that dairy is really lacking is, you know, preformed omega fatty acids. So this is a cheddar uh, we have on Frankie's free range meat. I uh, didn't have mozzarella, and you know this is delicious too. So some of you guys might be thinking cheddar on pizza. Well, grilled cheese with tomato soup is pretty classic. Plus, mozzarella is never raw. When you have a raw cheese, it preserves more of the nutrients. And I'm going a little crazy with the cheese because again, the bottom is chicken, and we want to cover up the chicken flavor. So that's good. Just high broil for a few minutes to melt the cheese. It's been about two minutes. Looks good. And the pan distorts from the heat just in time. That looks great, guys. You don't want to melt it too much. You see the, the cheese is getting really oily. 
There's our pizza boys. I'm still maintaining my girlish figure, but apparently it was my brother's good cooking. I can't resist it. I could show my whole face and every. One of the reasons I like this crust so much is because you could pick it up like an actual piece of pizza and eat it. Yep, I like this. You ready, friend? Yes. Mmm. If you guys are missing pizza, Mm -hmm. This will definitely scratch that itch. Honestly, I don't really taste the chicken. Nope. And if you don't put salt in the crust of the chicken, it'll probably make it even more subtle. Mm. As I could eat like this whole thing, perfect for bodybuilding. It's very good, very light. I could eat three, four pieces right now and taste so good. Second slice. I will say, despite the crust being made from meat, it is very light compared to regular pizza. It is meat in this? And there is no reason you couldn't eat this every night. You know, organic chicken breast, Parmigiano cheese, eggs, raw cheese, mm -hmm. all super high quality, super healthy ingredients. Okay, you know, it's not like four. it's not like some past recipes we did, like carnivore cheesecake, where you have to be a little bit, you know, reasonable with it to not gain weight. I think you'll be okay with this. You know, like my healthy chocolate chip cookie recipe mm -hmm. definitely packs on a few pounds. Mm -hmm. All right, just one more slice, Gina. Mm -hmm. We had a test pizza earlier, and she ate half of it, so sure. for her to eat half of this pizza, too, is, uh... Want to bet? Let's see how many slices I can fit in my mouth. <laughs> well, Gina, you act like this with anything I make. Mm-hmm. Because your is so good. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite thing so far? This pizza. She says everything's her favorite. Last week, it was the chicken cordon bleu. Mm -hmm. The week before, it was... What, do you have cheesecake or something, Gina? You remember the cheesecake? I don't think you ever made me cheesecake, did you? Gina, you were on video eating the cheesecake like a month ago. Oh, now I remember. Can you make me more cheesecake? So she's probably not a reliable source of objective tasting, but... So good, I love the cheese. Look how gooey that is. It's perfect. And I just stepped in sauce. That was great. Yeah. That's right, Gina, you can roll around in it like the piggy you are. And I'm going to slap him with a slice of pizza next. So thank you guys for joining us today. If you'd like to buy some raw cheese, we have it available on Frankie's Free Range Meat. Mm. The rest of this stuff can be found in your local grocery store. Hey, maybe you wanna try a beef crust uh, with our local ground beef from Frankie's Free Range Meat. If you guys haven't seen it, definitely check out my collab with Blair Walnuts. I will be linking that at the end here. It's a really funny video, guys. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Bye-bye.